Okay, well, we've got Dean Kim, uh, head of global research product at William O'Neill, joining us right now to take some questions. Dean, good to have you with us here. Thanks very much, as always. It's going to be a good start. It is uh, all bright and green across Asia. Uh, do you think uh, what happened overnight with the CPI, etc., clears up the path to a year in rally? Um, yeah, certainly uh, character change today. Uh, you know, really good gap up um, since the cooler than expected CPI print. You know, both NASDAQ and S&P, uh, they basically stopped making lower highs and lower lows. So it's really great to see that. Uh, we just need the breadth of the market to improve. Um, currently, we're still a bit narrow with only 29% of uh, New York Stock Exchange stocks trading above their 150-day moving averages. But if we look at Russell 2000 index uh, performance today, um, that's a good harbinger for what, you know, we should expect going forward. Um, and so if we do see continued PPI print coming in cooler, cooler than expected, uh, definitely we should see uh, sort of a you know, change in character in terms of the way the Fed is thinking. Um, I think that, would, that sentiment is kind of uh, spreading towards uh, other markets in Asia. Uh, we're noticing you know, AAXJ uh, really gapping up today. Uh, they're breaking above resistance at the 100-day moving average, still below the 200-day moving average, but um, clearly a positive sign. Uh, Dean, hi. Uh, good morning to you. So uh, I think the question that everyone's asking is that uh, if this fall in inflation is going to be durable in the U.S., uh, and if we've already seen the, you know, the peak in U.S. interest rates, then can we get a really strong equity market rally? Or will it be more, uh, more sort of consolidation as, as the economy deals with then uh, this higher for longer narrative, maybe no more rate hikes, but, you know, if rates remain elevated. So which camp are you in? Are you expecting a bigger rally because now we're past the peak or could it still remain a bit complex? Yeah, it's, it's a, a tough thing to sort of uh, forecast what's going to happen out there. But, uh, you know, we continue to think about one thing, which is um, if we look at all of the data uh, that's been coming in through earnings, for example, Home Depot, uh, reporting overnight, and um, they're citing uh, sort of slower than expected growth going forward. Um, and we've seen a lot of uh, job cuts as well, and we think more are coming. And so um, we may get a situation where we may have uh, one more leg down. Um, it could be a shallow uh, sort of correction, uh, given the fact that consumers are still fairly relatively healthy, uh, but we do expect a bit of a pullback uh, before sustained um, rally. Um, and so by then, probably the Fed is going to take the cues of, you know, weakening consumers, uh, further job cuts, uh, weakening retail sales in, in the market. And that's probably the clue for them to start cutting rates. And uh, we don't expect anything like that to happen probably towards the second half of next year. And so um, you know, right now it feels great for the market to sort of gap up, and uh, but the, I, I continue to look at relative strength or RSI. Um, it's sort of hot right now, so you know we may see a bit of a pullback. Uh, but the good news is there is a lot of support uh, for both S and P and Nasdaq at around the 100-day moving average, and so it's it's mm. certainly not going to be a straight line up, but um, uh, we will see gradual improvements. All right. Hi, Dean. Good morning. You know, give us a quick couple of levels then on the Nifty. What is the level you're looking at in terms of a resistance zone? Point number one. And point number two, yes, uh, you know, Indian markets are in a structural uptrend and the bull market is alive and kicking. The problem is in November so far, actually, we've underperformed what the U.S. markets have done. How do you see that playing out? Do you expect us to start outperforming at some point of time? Um, yeah, I, I think so. I think uh, India continues to have uh, very consistent organic growth. Um, you know, no one can deny that. Um, there's no other markets in, in around the world where you can see uh, continued double-digit organic growth. Uh, so I, I continue to see India as a fantastic market to be in. Now, in terms of uh, supports, um, right now, the Sensec, when I look at Sensec, uh, the next support is right here at the 10-day moving average. Uh, but when hopefully we can see a gap up when it opens and uh, resistance would be uh, at around 100 day moving average, which is 1% higher. Um, and so if we can get over that uh, 100 day moving average, 
uh, then I think we can firmly say that India market is is going to be in confirmed uptrend. Um, but on a long longer term basis, uh, um, continue to see you know very good trending market for India. Okay, well, uh, <clears throat> Dean, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us. So uh, you know, it does look like it's cleared up what's happened overnight. A significant uh, data point, which has opened the floodgates of bullishness, and maybe we will today get the kind of session we should have had on the Mohurat Diwali session. We'll uh, uh, you know, come back to some of this stuff in just a bit from now. But